Today I'm making coco vin. I've made a video of this a couple years ago. Uh, this today's recipe is a little more traditional. I'm using a, a little bit closer to the original idea, which is uh, coco vin means, as the name implies, it's a rooster in wine. Uh, I couldn't find a rooster. Well, that means it's an older bird, a tougher, older, uh, <clears throat> older bird that they just needed to find a way to cook because you can't cook it like you, most of the chickens that we eat are very young, maybe eight weeks less. So they're very tender. They let a, a chicken go to a year old or even longer and it's going to be it's tough, very tough, gnarly. A lot of connective tissue, very strong uh, uh, joints, uh, connective tissue. Skin is very tough. So this fricassee process where you saute the chicken first and then you stew it in wine for two hours was made just for this in mind. Uh, and I said I couldn't find a, a gallo, a rooster, so I got a gallina, a laying hen, which is about the same idea, it's an older bird. And uh, it turned out very well. This, is, uh, this introduction was, was being made after the fact. Uh, it went, turned out very well. Very happy with it. Well, I've got a little good light here. I'm just going to uh, walk you through uh, my kitchen. So I have my ham. I bought a very small kitchen, which just presents a, a challenge. Actually, you don't need, it's kind of a galley. So as you see, I've got everything kind of hanging up. Pans, paella, bigger stewing pot, more frying pans, utensils, uh, spices up here, cutting board, coffee grinder, enorm ginormous stew pot, pressure cooker, over here, I've got a, a mandolin for slicing, hand blender. Let's keep our eggs out here in Spain. We don't refrigerate them. They're, they're so fresh. Never worry about that thing. You call, whatever, whatever you call it, salmonella. I got a new uh, chef knife. My knives here, I've got a cleaver, another kind of cheapo, and a bread knife, and then Greatest kitchen invention, chef tongs, which people don't use over here. Not even in restaurants, I don't know how they do it. Indispensable tool. I've got a Le Creuset uh, heat uh, treated or uh, heat uh, spatula. That... Okay, the first step in making coco vin is to make the, the marinade, which we will begin with uh, a mirepoix, carrots, onion, Celery, garlic. Uh, my okay. Here is the mirepoix, carrots, celery, onion, and garlic. Now to this pot, I'm going to add wine. We're seasoning some black peppercorns, some laurel, uh, laurel, what the fuck, bay leaf, excuse me, and uh, thyme. So I've added the wine, the bay leaf, the thyme, and a few uh, black peppercorns. I won't add any salt at this stage because this is just the marinade. Now I'm going to bring this to a simmer for about five minutes just to blend all these flavors. And then we're going to um, lower the, cool this to uh, com make it completely cool before I add the chicken in the marinade because you don't want the marinade warm. Or you're going to have some, you have to risk the uh, foodborne illnesses with the, the chicken cooking. Okay, the next step will be cutting up the bird. As you can see, I have a, a whole, this is a gallina or a, a hen. Okay, after a bit of toil and struggle, I have uh, cut up the chicken in nice proportions. I just uh, learned how to trim chicken a, a new way it just makes it a little more uh, a little more elegant a little more uh, manageable um, the... okay so the chicken has been marinating in that sauce for uh, over 24 hours now I'm going to take the chicken out 
as you can see it's a nice uh, wine color uh, I'll take the chicken out and dry a little bit this is in a strainer so I'm gonna I'm gonna reserve all this sauce of course because it's good and that's what we're gonna use to cook with but I want to dry the chicken out because I'm going to uh, fry it up a little bit okay the next step is to cut up some of this um, unsmoked unsalted bacon this is uh, called tocino iberico and it's, it looks like it's pure fat but actually it doesn't render as much uh, fat as you would guess so I'll cut this okay uh, so I put this uh, cooking fat in a pan I'm, also, I'm gonna add some water to this because I don't want to I want it to render the fat I don't want to burn it covered so as you can see my stew pot is just entirely too big for this stove so I'll render this down put a lid on it and then when the fats render down I'll uh, take off the lid and evaporate the let the water evaporate so I'm just I can have the cooking fat. Okay, when the water burns off, you'll know it because it starts to sizzle. And then it's time to start cooking the chicken. Okay, as the chicken cooks, I'll be putting it right into the pot. You can see it's the sauce is very hot. You see the brown it good on a Just trying to burn off some of this fat on the skin is the most important part of this little uh, step here. Okay, I'm kind of getting uh, distracted here with my guests, but uh, after about two hours of cooking in the liquid, I've removed the chicken. As you can see, there's nothing in, nothing in the pot, nothing to be seen here, and I've strained it. And all this stuff, I'm just going to throw out. These, this, they've done their part, and it's time to uh, say goodbye to the mere plot vegetables and the other uh, ingredients we had. This is a view from my balcony. It is Christmas Day 2011 and I don't know if you can see there's too much sun to almost see but it's, there's not a cloud in the sky. Something for which I will always remember Spain. If I ever in unfortunate enough to not live here. <laughs> I will remember the completely cloudless skies here in Valencia. And here we have the peeled onions and just some button mushrooms. Nothing too fancy for this dish but uh, I'm just going to quarter these before I cook them. Okay, uh, the chicken's finished. Now I'm just going to brown these uh, pearl onions a bit. I've already cooked the mushrooms somewhere. There's the mushrooms. I didn't cook them very much because they're going to go back into the sauce at the end. So you just want to just get that little hint of the flavor on there. After we have cooked the, uh, the mushrooms and the onions, now I'm going to deglaze the pan with some brandy. Careful, it might flame up. As I've often said, deglazing a pan is a lot easier than cleaning it. Okay, so after almost two hours, I've taken the chicken out and uh, strained the sauce. And then I'm going to throw out all these vegetables we eat, the mere plop, and all the other. Okay, so now we just have this sauce, which I've strained. Um, this is, needs to reduce a little bit. Not too much, actually. Okay, what I'm making here is the beurre manier, which will thicken the uh, the sauce. This is just butter and flour, equal equal parts. So, okay, so I'm gonna add the beurre manier, and I'll just mix that up. Now, this is just like a roux, similar to a roux. It's just so the the flour will thicken it. And you have the, the fat on there so it won't turn into dumplings. 
if you just throw flour in here, it'll be uh, kind of a mess. I don't have a whisk. I can't believe I don't have a whisk. Okay. Okay, so I <clears throat> threw in the mushrooms, the cooked mushrooms, the cooked onion, uh, and the chicken. Now it's just a matter of bringing it up to temperature. My stove is so damn small, I couldn't cook my mashed potatoes and the chicken at the same time. So, uh, anyway, improvisation. Okay, the final minutes. This is looking really good. Gaina was very tender, it took a long time. After frying it, it was in the pot for like two hours and it was... I and mean, if you did that with chicken, it would just be a mess, but with the Gaina, it was uh, excellent. Got some bread from my baker. And this in the oven. Mashed potatoes. I cooked some, I, excuse me, picked some uh, fresh rosemary out in the country this morning on my bike ride as a garnish for the plates. Make it up. Okay, and this is the finished dish. Is he making a video? Is this a video? Yes. 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 Uh,